So I finished up putting the hood on and uh, this uses some unique latches. I didn't record any of this. It was just so time consuming and so tedious of lining everything up and putting all the latches and hinges on and the center belt. Um, even in time warp, I would have bored you to death, but it uses these kind of unique little latches here. And uh, I don't know if these are off a Marine or a boat or whatever but they came in the parts box, but it has this little hook on the bottom and it's like a cam and it latches in there and pulls it down tight. So there's one, two on the driver's side. And then on the passenger side, I've got the three hinges um, that I mounted on here with number 10 bolts. Um, and I knocked the center pins out of the hinges because I want to be able to take this hood off. And if I didn't have uh, a removable bolt and a nylock on here um, on each of the hinges, um, I wouldn't be able to just totally lift the hood off. That way I could work on anything on this side of the engine. So, so I knocked the pin out of the hinge and then I found a number six, like machine screwed, uh, put through there with a nylock on it. And that's gonna work out good. Just pull the three bolts out and uh, the hood will lift off on this side. And then also I got the center belt, I guess back in the 20s, they, this was pretty common as a safety feature or whatever, or I don't know why they did it, but uh, to use a leather belt, um, which connects on with these little hooks, one to center it, and then one on the driver's side. So this strap was sitting in a box, folded up uh, for 40 years or so, since 1985 probably, and it was all brittle and I had to recondition it. I like using Lexol uh, cleaner and uh, leather conditioner. Um, and I'll put the Amazon link in the description, but it comes in a squirt bottle, it's a cleaner, and then also uh, like a lubricant for the leather to soften the leather up. But if you have any leather furniture in the house, your leather seats in your car. So my next project for today is um, making wind wings and the windshield came as it is and it has these, these wings on the side here. And I built AC Cobras in the past and I uh, used a wind wing on those and that really works well. So I ordered these brackets on eBay for an AC Cobra and uh, I'm just gonna use these. And I already drilled the holes where I want them. That bracket will go on there like so and then I have some polycarbonate uh, scratch resistant plastic that I'll make a pattern for I'll use the CAD design again a piece of cardboard to, to cut it the way I want it and then I'll transfer it onto the polycarbonate and then uh, make my cuts. So this is my paper template and I think that's going to look pretty good there. I extended the top a little bit higher. But I think it's time to go ahead and uh, cut two of these out of the polycarbonate. This is my polycarbonate that I got. Um, it's uh, scratch resistant, abrasion resistant polycarbonate sheet. Tough act dash AR, whatever that means. But um, just cut it with a jigsaw, fine tooth jigsaw metal cutting blade and then I'll sand the edges and uh, put it on my uh, sander a little bit for the corners, make sure they're nice and round, and then line them up, drill some holes, and uh, that should finish the project. done they turned out great and then I can adjust them however I want them and good to go well I bed lined the inside of the hood got all the hinges and the studs mounted and a center holder for the belt that goes across and uh, I already showed the latches are already on and then I made a prop rod out of a uh, quarter inch round steel uh, that goes into the body right here and then I'll put a spring, the spring, and then a washer and a, basically a keeper pin 
on the inside and that'll hold that. And then I made a little flap of steel up in here uh, with a hole in it and I just Gorilla glued it, epoxied it to the fiberglass so that will hold it. And then I could take the rod in and out. So my next project is I want to make a cover uh, to go in front of the wiring harness there to cover all that up and uh, before I put the carpeting in the car. Back to my CAD design here, my cardboard aided design, which a few people have commented they thought that was pretty funny, but uh, I use this process all the time. But uh, this is going to be the tunnel uh, with a shifter kind of like right here, and it's going to be like a, just a cover um, with a couple little flaps uh, bent on an angle. To, I'll just put a screw in the side of the fiberglass tunnel to hold the cover in place and that'll make everything look nice and neat up underneath there. So with the power of magic, I can actually convert this into metal, bend it, paint it, and be done in a matter of seconds. So with the power of editing, there it is, made out of steel. And uh, turned out really well, I used bed lining. And I'll put the link, Amazon link in the description, it's Rust-Oleum bed lining, which is the best I mean, it dries fast, gives a hard texture surface on it, and I use this all the time. Um, so that's done. I have my little wings here that I'll screw in. Put a, punched a couple holes in here for the uh, tunnel. That'll just mount right there, cover everything up. And then my heater's gonna be like right in here. And then what I wanted to do too is put some cabin lights in so when it's really dark, I could throw the switch up on the dash. Um, so I have these LED lights I pulled off of the trailer. I had these laying around. They're amber, but um, they got these grommets. I punched a hole that'll go in there, and then these will not. And then I'll have the switch operated. And then I have one on the passenger side also that'll light up this area. Um, and then I thought it'd be a good idea, I like having a uh, uh, just a cigarette lighter plug, to plug in a phone charger and that will be up underneath there, so it'd be convenient. And then I just lay my phone on the tunnel with the cord coming, plug it in, charge it up. So my cover turned out great. A cigarette lighter plug in the middle, and I got the lights on the side with the dash switch here. So I can flip them on and uh, on both sides have a nice night light. I was able to figure out, for the most part, the convertible top bows um, on the bracket that I needed to mount into the fiberglass uh, back seat liner here, so I'll be able to adjust this a little bit back and forth, but apparently the top goes all the way back and then clips on to the trunk somehow with fasteners that I'll have to figure that out. All right, the car is done. And I got all the carpeting and the seats that I had in storage out of the barn. So the car is looking really good here. But uh, huh, the mice have gotten into the carpeting and the upholstery, so I don't know what I'm going to find. I'm sure I'm going to have a mouse turd or two. But uh, yeah, so hopefully it's not too bad. I'm going to lay everything out here. A nice sunny day here in Colorado. Get everything laid out in the driveway and then uh, see what I need to do with the pressure washer. And uh, yeah. Take it from there. Success, I found mouse turds. I was worried I wouldn't find any. They're everywhere. 40 year old mouse turds, most likely. So here's all the interior out of the bags and all the mouse turds taken off of it. But uh, fortunately, the interior, all the leather is perfect. Nothing's dry rotted. This hasn't seen sunlight since 1985 when it was put in a bag. But uh, I got my seat covers there, door panels, uh, two door panels, the back seat it looks like. It has a uh, convertible top boot, so when the top's down, it'll go over the frame as a boot. And there's the tonneau cover, which is kind of neat. I didn't know it had that. Some extra material for going around the door frames, the rear seat. And then here's the convertible top. And this strapping here, I have no idea what that's for. And it has side curtains. So, but it needs to be all fitted with all the snaps and everything to make it work. 
But here's where the mice got in the carpet and the carpet's pretty rough. And I'm thinking I could clean this, get the pressure washer out, or maybe take it to the pressure washer car wash with soap on it. And, uh, but I've got some damage like right on the transmission hump here with mouse poop and urine and stuff over there some. So I'll see if I can clean this up, but if there's even a slightest smell, I'm not gonna use it. I'll just get new carpeting and uh, use these as the pattern. Wow, the carpeting turned out great. Um, all nice and clean, all the mouse urine and poop and all the straw and everything off of it and it just turned out uh, really well here thank goodness but uh you've seen in my previous videos those that follow the channel i like using super clean foaming um for degreasing transmissions engines you spray it on like a greasy situation and you see it dissolve in the grease uh, but i thought i'd use it uh, to pre-treat the carpeting for the mouse and urine and uh, help disinfect it a little bit before i brought out the pressure washer and I tell you what it worked great I don't know if it's intended for that but I used it since I had uh, a couple bottles laying around and uh, it really took it out well so uh, again super clean foaming I use this stuff quite a bit for years and it's been in a number of my other videos but uh, really works well Amazon link in the description if you want to pick up a bottle try it but uh, the next thing is uh, the upholstery and I have my buckets I'm going to tackle first here. I'm going to do that today. It's windy and cold out here in Colorado, so I'm going to get the seats upholstered and uh, get that done. And then after that, I'm going to pull the uh, rear seat liner out, foam it, get it all upholstered. And then after that goes back in, then I'm going to install the carpeting. But uh, so uh, I'm going to not bore you to tears. So let's go into time warp on the GoPro right now. Let's check out the new bucket seats. They are done, looking really good. Next thing is to pull out this rear seat liner, get it upholstered. Wow, the back seat turned out great. Got the base of the seat done and upholstered. Show that in the time warp. Installed uh, all the way around, looks great. Got the convertible top uh, mounted back on. Next thing is to get the buckets out and finish up the carpeting. to get this shifter replaced i got the new shifter in uh, the shifter boot from speedway uh, last night and it is bigger than this little round ring i had on here which is too small the other thing is uh, when you're off to the side this rubber really gets stiff on this type of shifter boot 
So more traditional way of getting a shifter boot is to get uh, the kind that just has the metal ring and then has the sewn material and goes around the shift lever right there um, and then attaches to the bottom of this. But uh, what I like to do, this is going to be the orientation, front of the car, rear of the car, back here. And I like lining up my sewing seams um, so it's dead center around here. And then I go around the edge with a little bit of glue, with a glue gun here, and that'll hold it in place. And then after that, flip it over, cut it with the screws, cut it with a little razor blade and then make room for the screw and then I can mount it. But, uh, seen a lot of people try to mount it and then uh, work the material. Josie, what are you doing over there? Hey, I'm trying to record here. Okay. So anyway, go around there, it holds it in place and then it's easier to manipulate, put it over the shifter and then uh, finish up the project. So let's go into time warp. This turned out very nice, so it matches the emergency brake boot. Now I have the shifter boot. Done. The interior is looking really good. Next project for today is to do the door panels. On the inside here, I ordered some foam on Amazon that'll make this flush, and then I can glue the uh, inner pad to the door. Here are the door pads ready to go. So I'm going to take these doors off. Nice thing is I have the star nuts on the other side that'll stay in place. And then I'll just remove the screws, take the door off. Project is to do the trim that goes around all the doors in the dash. Uh, first step is to cover it with foam. This is one inch foam, so I already have this uh, spray glued. I'm just waiting for it to tack up before I can put it on. And then the side pieces behind the doors. And uh, once that's done, time to cover it with the uh, upholstery vinyl.
just an update exciting day the interior is done on the car and it is looking good yesterday i washed it got a couple scratches i need to buff out with rubbing compound on the fenders a couple little touch-up spots but uh there's the interior turned out fantastic so as you saw in the video i did all the padding on the side pieces uh, the little padded area that goes around the dash around the side doors the little like L brackets that go on here have all my staffs drilled into the body so this is going to be for the side cover uh, side curtains that uh, will snap on to these locations here and here and here um, but wow it turned out great all the carpeting's done but uh, I'll do a whole walk around here but uh, I got the stereo speakers mounted seat belts in seats bolted back down again and it just turned out fantastic but uh ready to start driving it and i do have registration uh on it plates insurance so uh right now it's about 40 degrees out here in colorado so i'm gonna wait for it to warm up maybe this afternoon or tomorrow and take it out for a ride uh one of the last things i need to do oh i also did a safety inspection on it yesterday about three hours where I put it up in the air and I went through all the lug nuts, all the bolts, castle nuts, make sure the carter pins are still in, and just went through everything to make sure I didn't miss anything safety-wise, uh, which could be a catastrophic failure driving it on highway, but everything checked out. Um, the next thing is I've got the convertible top to go on. Um, I pre-mounted the bows um, that are go on it. So that is done and mounted. So it's going to be something like this uh, on the car, kind of like a bimini top on my boat. But uh, so that's going to be the last thing. And then uh, I need to drill into the fiberglass here through the material and then around the trunk to put all the snaps in for the uh, convertible top to go on. And then I do have a boot for the convertible top. And I also have a tonneau cover where you can unzip uh, the driver's side down through here and then fold it back and actually just have your seat exposed and everything else will be flat on if I'm going to put that on but uh, looking really good got it all shined up and uh, maybe I'll tackle the convertible top tomorrow uh, punch holes through the vinyl top put the snaps into the fiberglass and uh, turned out really good and uh, the top is in like brand new shape uh, usually the clear plastic over years is yellowed, but this was done in 1984 and it's still crystal clear, which is nice. Uh, the car is licensed and insured, so I've been driving it a bit. Uh, just fine-tuning some of the issues. Got my Colorado 1929 plates on it, which just happened that the brown matches the, uh, the fenders, which was really cool. But uh, the interior is all done. And uh, back seat looks great. And the bucket seats, uh, considering how narrow they were when they were fiberglass, they're actually pretty comfortable. Got the seat belts in, uh, all the dash around, and, and the top is on. And how that works is there's like a one inch piece of aluminum that's sewn into the, uh, to the vinyl. And it loops around, goes up underneath here on a lip. And then I put snaps. Uh, right here on the side to hold that down and uh, I had it in some high winds the other day and uh, worked great so I think now I'm gonna show you how to fold it back down and uh, maybe uh, go ahead and wrap up the video So pretty easy to put the top down and I made these uh, straps out of some extra material that I had. Put a couple snaps on. I also have it tied in the front so uh, the wind won't catch it going down the road. It's working really well. And a uh, nice little package folds up nice and neat on the back trunk. Plus I can undo the latches here and still get in the trunk, have trunk access. But uh, yeah, worked out pretty good. So this is going to be the last build video. I think I'm up to 12 or 13 now. I'm building this car. And uh, appreciate everybody subscribing. Uh, 
almost just right on the edge of 2,000 subscribers right now, 80, 81 videos. And uh, the next video will be the final drive and walk around. So don't miss that one. That should be out here in another week, week and a half. And that'll complete the project. But uh, thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Refer a friend. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments on stuff I did right or stuff I did wrong. Um, so let's go ahead and wrap it up. Thanks for watching.